How easy or how difficult is it to coach a player like Peyton? It's easy in this way. He wants to be great, and he wants you to tell him how to be great. The difficult part of coaching him was his expectation. <laughs> he would come in every day with a yellow legal pad. We need to do this, 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 and this. And you'd have to be able to say, okay, well, we can do two of these things. The other eight, we can't do just yet because you might be smart enough to handle it, but we've got 53 other guys that, you know, we've got to slow down a little bit. And he always was, you know, hey, we, we can do this. We can do this better. And you love that, but you had to kind of temper it at times. Was it hard coaching a great player? That's great, knows he's great, but you're like, uh, yeah, Peyton, you're great, but I don't have 10 other Peyton Mannings to go along with you. That can be the toughest thing sometimes. He would see, especially on offense, he would see something that another team ran against our opponent. We ought to put this in. This I know it'll work. Yeah, we could put it in, but everybody's not going to pick it up as fast as you are. So let's let's work on the plays that we already have. <laughs> <laughs> so Playing the quarterback position, obviously you were a quarterback. You played in at a major college. Being a defensive coordinator, because I think that's where probably you helped Peyton the most, because you get an opportunity to say, well, Peyton, if you came out in this formation, in this area of the field, in this situation, this is the coverage that I would probably play against you. And if you did this, this would be my retort to what you're doing. Yeah. Talk, talk, to, talk to us about you sitting down with Peyton going over game plans on what he wanted to do and what he, where you were expecting from the opposing defense. Yeah, we'd have a lot of those kind of conversations. And the other unique thing is our, our offensive coordinator, Tom Moore, was my offensive coordinator in college. Right. We had the same system. No huddle offense. The quarterback ran everything at the line of scrimmage. So I played in that system. Right. And I knew it. But then I would come and on Fridays, I would be the defensive coordinator for the scout team. Right. So I would throw up the defenses and say, hey, and, I, and I had the advantage. I knew I had the script. I knew what play. Was. <laughs> so I, I could say, all right, we're going to do this. We'll see if he can handle this. This uh, Blitz over here would wreck this play. We'll do this. And I try to keep him sharp that way. They might do these kind of things. But, but we would have those conversations. What do you think the defense will do to take away Marvin today? What, what are they going to do? And I would say, well, here's their options. Based on their personnel, they might try to do this. They might try to do this. Well, what is the weakness if they do that? Well, here's where we can hit them. And I used to love to have those kind of conversations with them. Coach, you seem so stoic on the sideline. I don't think I've ever, in all the years that I've played against you, I've watched you. I don't think I've ever seen you throw your hat. I don't ever see you throw up your hands. Uh, I know you don't swear, so I've never seen you do that. How were you able in a chaotic environment, because you know what the sidelines are and you know the swing and the ebbs and flows of a ball game. How are you able to stay so calm? Well, two things that helped me. Number one, when I played, if I made a mistake, I didn't need a coach to yell at me and tell me I made a mistake. I knew what I did wrong. What I needed was somebody to tell me what I should do to do it right. right. So I always had that in mind. Players aren't trying to mess up on purpose. So right. what can I do to help that guy do it better the next time? And then the, the second thing, if something would go wrong with a bad call, with a fumble, with a, a problem, hey, it's already bad. What can we do to make it better? Let, let's think about the next play. That was always my mentality. You know what to do. Hit the subscribe button to become an official member of Club Shay Shay, where we always do something before two something.